This episode of the Swoopcast is brought to you by the Spitballin' Podcast. Here at the Swoopcast, we are thrilled to finally be taking some of the baseball with our new sponsors, the Spitballin' No G Bod Podcast. Uh, we know that we will give you some of the best football and basketball coverage in the world for Ohio State, but baseball is booming and we have now found your new MLB pod. Take a listen to Spitballin' Podcast by your very own Swoopcast Austin and his buddy Reed, who is a lifetime baseball fan. Just like here, there will be some shenanigans, but there will also be unbiased MLB coverage from someone who has grown up around the game, as well as someone who's brand new to the game. Again, that is Spitballing Podcast, available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and wherever you stream your platform or stream your podcasts from. All right, guys, here we go. This is a more traditional sleep camp episode. Uh, we just got done recording the Haskins thing, so if we're a little somber for maybe not our energetic selves right off the top, it's uh, you've had a full day. Uh, we're we're doing this right now, and like the tone shift is difficult. So, uh, but we're gonna make this a regular episode, um, at least to the best of our we're, abilities. We're... Yeah, we're just a few days away from um, from the spring game here, so let's let's go ahead and uh, jump into today's episode. Let's absolutely do that. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? All right, Jared. How are you doing today? I the uh, yeah words words they're tough sometimes <laughs> and sometimes i i don't feel like i want to be restrained by language that's it that's the tweet that's 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 all i got to say about that how about da right. see words, words all right are well not not sufficient well, see, sometimes well, well let's use some words that people will understand here and, and that's uh recruiting recruiting we got ourselves a uh, a new commit for the 2023 class and that is uh malik hartford uh, out of lakota west he is um, one of the nation's top safeties and is now verbally committed to ohio state yeah yeah um 2023 class starting to take a bit of shape um i feel like oh you guys i haven't done one in a minute i feel like oh you guys a new mock class that might be a thing i do in the next coming weeks um, but yeah, um, this is now the sixth player of the 2023 class. Uh, this is another great pickup uh, from in-state. One thing we always sort of worried about under Urban Meyer was a lack of in-state kids. Uh, right now, the 2023 class, Kyle, four of the six are in-state. Joining Luke Montgomery from Finley, Joshua Padilla uh, from Ohio, uh, uh, from Dayton, Ohio, obviously from Ohio, uh, and obviously Will Smith, defensive tackle, son of the legendary Will Smith. Uh, he's uh, in Dublin right now. So, uh, because there's going to be booms at the end of April, post spring. Oh, yeah, and it was always going to be post spring game. I mean, one of the reasons. I feel like we normally would have done another mock class like at the end of March, but like with camp in full swing and basketball was still going like it just didn't make sense. So I'll probably do one towards the end of April. Yeah. Well, Preferred Ohio State has no, those are good. all those are all scholarship players. Yeah. Just just as a reminder here. So for the 2023 class here, Ohio State has now three of the top four uh recruits in the state of Ohio. Uh, Luke Montgomery, Joshua Padilla, and Malik Hartford now. And the lone one that we've mentioned a while ago, and that was um, Brennan Vernon, who is the defensive lineman um, currently committed to Notre Dame. Yeah, and I I don't expect that to change. Just for yeah. what it's worth, I don't expect that to change. Um, yeah, there's going to be some more booms coming up, I think. Um 
a lot of positive buzz around running back uh, March Fletcher right now. Mark Fletcher? Did I say March? Mark Fletcher okay. right now. Um, yeah, and Ohio State's also picked up some uh, preferred walk-ons for the 2022 class in the past re- in the recent days. Uh, but yeah, there's, uh, I think maybe Kyle. All right, prediction time. Let's do this. All right. Between now and when we I actually do the mock class, which would probably be the last week of April, between now and then, two additional commitments. That, that that's what I was thinking too. Maybe maybe for maybe if we're lucky, we may get a third one. Oh man, I I felt I felt like I was I felt like I was pushing it with two. To be honest with you, I feel like I was pushing it with two. Uh, I feel, I feel who, pretty confident about two. And which two are those? I don't know. I just, I what? just no, 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 no. <laughs> you can't say I'm pretty confident about two, and then not that, t- that there will be that there will be two. I don't think that's what you meant. That is what I meant. I think you're lying. That's what I think. Uh Kyle's don't count. Why don't Kyle's count? Um, let's see the, yeah, it's, it's, I almost want to jump into recruiting, but that's not what this episode is. That's not what this episode is. Uh, we'll, we'll be, we'll be back with recruiting after the spring game. Don't you worry. Um, so black stripe updates. So we, we did have, uh, this is a little while ago. I don't know if we mentioned it at the time or not, because it just felt like a felt like the obvious thing that it was going to happen. Tanner McAllister, who's like expected to start on the defense, right? Is is the only person experienced in the new defense on the team, being an Oklahoma State transfer. Like, all, like he was going to lose the black stripe first, right? Like that's obvious. So obvious that, like I said, I don't even know if we talked about it when it happened, but. Kyle, we had our very first, our absolutely very first black stripe removal from a freshman. And zero disrespect to Kai Stokes, who I think has a, a good future at Ohio State. Probably wouldn't have been in the top three people I would have guessed. And who would that be then, Jared? Who would I have guessed? Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, hold on. Let me think about it. I mean, like, I think there's some obvious answers. Um, just if you look at the recruiting class, um, Caleb Burton comes to mind. Um, I feel, I mean, then like obviously the two linebackers, right? Obviously, like the two linebackers between C.J. Hicks and Gabe Powers, two guys I, I think certainly could have been in that mix. Um, if I had to pick one, if I had to pick one, I think it would have been CJ Hicks. I feel like that's of all the people on the team. Oh, okay. Hold on. Do I want to say this? Of all of the freshmen on the team, he is the most likely to have a huge impact on this season. Yeah, I'm going to stick with that. By the way, okay. Amari Abor would have also been an acceptable answer for the first black stripe removal. But yeah, I think CJ Hicks is like the number. Yeah, true freshman. That's what I mean. True freshman. Um, He's the number one person to have, in my opinion, I, he would have been the person I'd have guessed who lost the black stripe first. He still is the person, as far as that's concerned, who I would expect to have the biggest impact as a true freshman on this team. Yeah, I think, I think, um, I think the ones I would have ahead of Stokes that I thought would have had their stripes removed. I, Hicks definitely right up there. Uh, Sony, Sony styles as well. And I'll go, I'll go with the, um, I'll go with another, I'll, I'll just stick to all Ohioans here. I'll, I'll go with uh, Gabe Powers. Yeah. Um, 
like between Powers and Hicks, I gotta go Hicks. But and that's no disrespect to Powers. That's more of just like a paying respect towards Hicks. Um, I don't know. I I still linebackers are good on special teams, so that's a that's a I think a a reason why you'd expect one of those two guys to make freshman impacts. Um, and also like it's probably just one of the. Uh, were they the number one and number two linebackers out of high school? That, I don't think so. No, Hicks was number one and Powers was number eight. Oh, really? Did he fall all the way to eight? Mm-hmm. No, yeah, he was, he was up there. He was really high at one point. Yeah, he slipped uh, a no, lot. Not, not even point. in the state of Ohio. Like, if you want to do state of well, Ohio. that's still Hicks. Yeah, Hickson would be one. Um, oh, gosh, number one and number two in Ohio, I think is what gangland means. For linebackers, yes. Yes. Yeah. No, uh, yeah, he fell a bit in the rankings uh, during the season because he was a guy, I think at one point was like a, I think he was like a, a, a top 30, maybe just outside the top 30 guy at one point. Um, but like I said, definitely sort of slipped off as far as like 24 seven rankings went the composite rankings that is, um, but reports out of camp are, are great, uh, as long as well as CJ Hicks. Um, I think the linebackers have a bit of an advantage. The freshman linebackers have a bit of an advantage here because everyone's starting from scratch. It's a brand new defense. Um, and like the, the. No one's super established at linebacker. Like, is anyone super established at linebacker? Like, who's super established at defensive end? Lots of guys. Like, there's probably like you name your three top defensive ends right now. You can we can bicker about order, but like, Steele is a guy who you will see in the linebacker rotation. Is he a guy who absolutely is going to start one hundred percent? No, he's the guy who I would expect to start. That would be my prediction. Uh, will high school NIL help or hurt Ohio changing off-season high school practice rules? Oh, that that, that took a shift. Uh, it's not how I expected that question to end. Um, I don't know. Um, that that I I hadn't considered how that may or may not affect high school practice, like summer practice rules uh that's i that put zero thought into that i was expecting you to say you know how will that affect ohio recruiting how will that affect this or that that though that took a turn i wasn't ready for um would it eventually extend practice rules i again i i don't know i don't i don't i've not put thought into how potential high school NIL in Ohio would would affect practice rules. That's just not a thing I've considered. What it would really benefit are like I know Troy Smith and some other guys are trying to put together a sports academy a la you know Bishop Gorman or some of the other like athletic magnet schools you see around the country trying to put together one of those for Ohio. That would be huge. Uh, If there's, you know, it'd be huge for those schools, those magnet schools, if their state had Ohio or had uh, high school NIL. That would be huge for for schools like that. Yeah. So, (laughs) yes, like Bishop Sycamore. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, So kind of going back what you were saying about. That's unpredictable funny. not not knowing who is who's going to be there at linebacker well that that's one thing that the offense is really seeing right now is the unpredictability of the defense here uh so in this week a, a lot of the offensive players talked to the media um were answered a lot of questions from the media here and it one of the trends here was about about Jim Knowles and how, and how um, impressed they were with him and how he's able to quickly change the defense and really confuse even, 
even CJ Stroud and Devin Brown and other players on the offense too. Uh, CJ CJ Stroud here said that he um, they're seeing a lot of different different things, uh, different ways to get different coverages, which is really good to, uh, for my eyes to see, not just cover one or three or just base coverage. Um, says appreciate coach Knowles bringing the swagger to deep to the defense. It's really going to help our defense. Our offense. Or offense. Yes. Yeah. Cause I mean, you know, to, let me pull a cliche out of the bag. It's, it's a real like, Iron sharpens iron situation. If the defense is playing better, that's going to give the offense new unique looks to to face and to consider and to overcome. And like it'll just make CJ Stroud and everyone else on the offense that much better if they have a really good defense to play against in practice. Mm-hmm. And even even if, even Devin Brown and this this next clip from Devin Brown, you're gonna. Buckeye Nation's going to love hearing hearing this because all we saw last year was just how base or basic the defense was and how predictable they were. Uh, Devin Brown said, with with our defense, which Coach Knowles has done, you never know what you're going to get. All of a sudden, you get three guys up in the A gap and you didn't even see it coming in the first place. Even on the offensive side, uh, like we haven't seen a defense like this. So it's a learning curve for our coaches to being able to learn from them and adjust really fast because we never know what the defense is going to give us. So just being able to react to that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. More packages means more fun. Yeah. Uh, Gangland says, yeah, only a base defense with like two blitz packages. Yeah, exactly. Like it was... What, what, what the defense was, that? was there, painfully there, there, predictable the last two there, years. There was a gif about there was a gif about the offense a number of years ago. I'm not um, reading that it, one, Nomad. Like it, it was it was um like the offense of how there was like only three or five plays and it, and it was like doing it from like the Madden view, like hey, pick pick one of these offensive the, the, plays the, and it yeah. was the same one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but that's what it is, right? Like it was the Jim Bowles offense, but just Pass coach. <laughs> it was the Jim Bowles offense, but just like for the defense. And that's kind of what we had for a while uh, for the last two years at Ohio State. And it wasn't uh, it wasn't good. Uh, and again, like I feel like. During a lot of the discourse among fans, people were like, I want more zone. I want more cover two. I want more cover three. I want more man to man. I want more this. I want more that. And it's just like, they just need to be unpredictable. Like they just need to mix it up. They It was just painfully repetitive and painfully basic. Like it, what else? What else is there to, to say? It was just boring and predictable and basic. And like when it happened the first year, like you almost want to give them a pass because it was the COVID season and there wasn't a lot of practice time and it was just, it was terrible. And it, uh, but you sort of hope that maybe with like a return to a normal schedule and and whatnot, in the 2021 season that it was going to be better. It wasn't. Uh, I, and I, and I don't get, I, I, I still don't get that, but yeah, it's, you now bring in an experienced defensive coordinator and we have a lengthy quote from him that we'll get to on the other side of this ad break. That's a tease. I'm a professional, but first we have to do this ad break. Uh, Kyle, won't you tell us about our good friend, Austin's new podcast. Sure. And that podcast is the Spitballing Podcast. Um, here at the Swoopcast, we're thrilled to be finally be talking about some baseball with our new sponsors, the Spitballing Podcast. So that's Spitballing with no G at the end of it. Uh, we know we'll give you some of the best football and basketball coverage in the world for Ohio State. But baseball is booming, and we have now found your new MLB podcast. Take a listen to Spitballing Podcast by our very own Swoopcast Austin and his buddy Reed 
um, who is a lifetime uh, baseball fan. Just like here, there will be some shenanigans, but there will also be unbiased MLB coverage from someone who has grown up around the game as well as someone who is new to the game. Uh, that is Spitballin' Podcast, available in, on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many other podcast streaming platforms. Yes, no Matt, he did say shenanigans. I um, did say shenanigans. All right, uh, from Jim Knowles, we want to create indecision for the offense, and particularly for the offensive coordinator. I think call. I think in college, offensive coordinators even have more hands on things that uh, have more hand on things that happen than the NFL. So you want to be able to create multiple defenses out of simple looks and be creative in a way. God, I'm just loving every second of this. I just had to stop and say that. That the players can understand. Um. So we want to create two to three simple pictures that when you look at it or the offensive coordinator looks at it, he can't tell what's going to happen from that same picture and that we have the ability to really do anything out of the same picture or that look. And by the way, I'm just really happy that they can do two or three things. If they can do two or three things really well, that's probably two or three things more than they could do really well last season. Um, but the fact that they can mix it up and be predictable out of the same look, when I don't feel like the past two years, the Ohio State defense has um, been good at giving two or three looks and mixing it up out of, regardless of what look. Like... Being unpredictable, like, and this is especially huge for, you know, in college, because you're dealing with unexperienced quarterbacks so often. If you can sit there and look like you're in a base defense, showing no indications, showing no tells, giving nothing to the quarterback, if you can do three really good defenses, three really good packages, Schemes would be a better word than packages out of the same pre-snap look. And then if you can have three other looks with three schemes out of those three other looks. So now you have six different schemes or you have nine different schemes out of just three separate looks. And if you can do that well and do that in a way that is simultaneously effective and secretive. And by the way, as Knowles also said, do it in a way that the players can understand. One of the things I know, it's not in this quote, but one of the things I've heard Knowles say, or actually, I'm sorry, that I've heard players say about Knowles' defense is that in the past, they knew what their roles were. But under Knowles, They now know what the entire defense is doing. So they're not just learning what they do. Which is a thing, by the way, that we heard coming out of the the coaching room, out of the defensive coaching room recently, with the old staff, was like the communication among the defensive folk was not there. Like there was a lot of non-communication between people within the defensive coaching room. And by the way, there weren't that many of them. And the fact that you didn't have coordination and you didn't have communication between your defensive staff explains a lot. It explains a lot. Yeah. So it's... If now you're in a in a situation where not only do all the coaches know what's going on, but all the players know what all the other players are doing and they understand the scheme as a whole and not just their responsibility, my God, it's like they're running a grown-up defense over there or something. Uh, Steel Chambers was um, also asked 
uh, this week from the media. Um, he was asked about the Buckeyes offense seeming more confused than they did in, in 2021. And he said, yeah, they look a little more confused because we're just bringing a, a bunch of new shit and I don't blame them because I mean, it's confusing for us, so it's definitely confusing for them. Uh, goes on to say, he's really excited for him and um, Tommy um, talk about it every day, the brand new defense. I guess it's because it's new, but just the freshness of it. Uh, it just really feels like a deep breath of air. It's just fun to do something new, just getting to do new jobs and stuff. Just run around and have fun. Run around, have fun, hit people. Sounds like some silver bullet talk to me. <laughs> yes. I don't know. I'm getting my hopes up. Anyone else getting their hopes up about the defense? Jim Knowles is doing all the right things early on. Hard, hard not to. And it's not just that he's saying the right things because the guy obviously knows how to talk, right? Like he's a good talker. Uh, I get that for both for how he talks to the media and reportedly like what I'm hearing about how he communicates and teaches to the players. Mm. Like the guy knows how to talk, right? But it's not just what we're hearing from Knowles. That's not just what we're hearing from Day either. Because of course, Day, this is Day's biggest hire. Like he's obviously going to be like, yeah, Knowles is turning out great. Obviously, he's going to be like, but it's just hearing quotes like this out of Steel Chambers, I think, that are huge. And not just that Steel Chambers is like, yeah, we really like the new defense. He's like, oh, we're excited. I'm excited. Tommy's excited. Everyone's excited. And it's like it's the quotes about like I said, like I said before, about how they used to just know what they were doing. But now they know what everyone's doing and they're understanding the defense from the top to the bottom and the bottom to the top. My hopes are up. Yep, Don't yep. let me down, Jim. <laughs> All right, let's let's get to some questions here, Jared. All right. Let's get to some questions here. Uh start with Odin. Yes, we have a we have an Odin in our, our Discord. So be sure to join us in the Discord. We got a bunch of great great people in, in our Discord talking about football, basketball. Uh, some some sport about about throwing a small white ball around, um, and then someone Monia, else tries Monia. to hit it with a stick. Sounds yeah, primitive. I, I don't quite, I don't, I don't quite understand it, but yeah, uh, and a lot a lot of other shenanigans going on here. So check us out at, at the Discord. A lot of great, great, great stuff going on in there. Uh, so Odin starts off saying, uh, um, would rewarding the highest ranked team that didn't make a playoff solve a lot of uh, parity issues in sports? Well, what, what, I guess, like, what, what are you defining as a parity issue? Because if you say in all of sports, like, baseball has a parity issue in that there is none, right? Like, the best teams can just buy their roster. Buy. Meanwhile, I've heard the argument made that there's too much parity in football, that like all the teams are average and basically sometimes who ends up winning the Super Bowl or going deep into the playoffs is simply determined by just the quarterback because everyone else is so even or by just who has the healthiest roster at the end of the year. So I've heard the argument that there's too much parity in football. Um. So I don't know if the parity problem is necessarily a consistent issue across all the sports. Um, rewarding the highest ranked team that didn't make the playoffs solve a lot of parity issues in sports. I don't know. Because um, he also asks, should professional sports de-incentivize tanking? And like the NBA does that, right? Like if you have the worst record, you don't automatically get the first pick. It, it's a lottery system. Now the worst team gets the best shot at the first pick, but it's not a guarantee. Should the NFL employ something like that? I don't see why not. Mm -hmm. I mean, we do have direct accusations from a former head coach pointed at an owner who was instructing him to throw games. That's a thing that has been alleged that, that was happening in Miami. 
And that one of the reasons why the coach alleges he was fired in a lawsuit was that he refused to tank the games. Again, this is these are allegations in a lawsuit. Um, so take it for what it's worth. But like, has it happened? I'm sure. I'm sure it's yeah. happened somewhere. Should the NFL adopt the lottery system in the draft like the NBA does? I think maybe, right? Maybe. Because I think a lot of teams get stuck in this terrible rut of being mediocre. Not quite good enough to make the playoffs, but not bad enough to get like impactful rookies. Because sometimes in the NFL, like only the first few picks are like guaranteed impact right away players. Uh, especially if you need a quarterback, especially if you need a quarterback, because like sometimes there's only one or two of those in a draft that are like franchise potential quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. Um, Like the Bengals were stuck for a long time as a team that was just barely missing the playoffs. Then they had a real terrible year. They get Joe Burrow. Now they're in the Super Bowl. That's not a coincidence. That's not a, that that's, that's life. That's how the NFL works sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Again, because the par- you have the parity issue of all these teams being so even. And if you get a quarterback who's transcendent and you get a team that's young and therefore cheap, because that's how, like, with the new draft rules, right, with the, the way rookies are signed to, like, these four- or five-year contracts if your team's incredibly young your team's incredibly cheap joe burrow isn't making shit for money compared to what he would have been had he been drafted into the nfl 20 years ago when they were just handing out not even 20 i I don't remember when they changed the contract rules for rookies but it was insane uh the the money these guys were getting straight out of college um but yeah i don't know um It is what it is. I don't know. Like, I think the NFL could, maybe even should adopt adopt a lottery system for the draft. Why not? I think so. I think so. Uh, Odin also asked, what is one area of concern from last year that you feel better about for 22? The same or worse about? One area. The def- I like the defense, right? Like, I feel so much better about that. Oh, just mm-hmm. already uh, from concern from last year. You feel better about for 2022, the defensive ends, uh, the linebackers, the linebackers, the safeties, the cornerbacks, the defensive play calling, the defensive play scheming, uh, all of it. Just just all of it. Just just the entire defense other than defensive tackles, the defensive tackles last year were amazing. Every other position on the defense, however. Oh, and and obviously, like, one of the cornerback spots. One of the cornerback spots, Jared, is that gray hair I see. No? (laughs) I do have some in my beard. I don't think the the, the camera's high def enough to see that, though. There are some in my beard, but uh, I don't have any on the top of my head as far as I've seen. Um, Something similar. You see six? Um, I don't think so. Similar about um, improvement, uh, Kabuto uh, says, is Tanner McAllister the most important defensive player on the team regarding the defense's improvement this year? I no, um, but maybe because like you can make the argument that he's like the coach on the field, right? Because he actually knows the defense, unlike a lot of the guys. So that's obviously very important. Yeah, that, that would be. But as far as like who's that single player? I don't know if there is one like because the the defense is talented. The defense always has been talented. The problem has always been scheme. The problem. Yeah, like the defensive ends, talented defensive tackles, talented. The linebackers are talented. The cornerbacks are talented. The safety, uh, uh, you know, maybe maybe they had some talent issues at safety last year. But, uh, well, I mean, in, in injuries. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bad. 
because of Proctor going down, they didn't really have anyone behind Proctor for that spot. And yeah, no, that, that was absolutely an issue. Um, so I, but I, I kind of feel like they went from having no one at safety to having a bunch of guys at safety. Cause they moved some guys from corner to safety with the invention, with the, um, sort of the expansion of the safety spot. And so you have the cover safety. So now some of the corners are playing safety. Um, again, like they had two really good recruiting classes in 21 and 22 and, or excuse me, 20 and 21. And a lot of those guys are coming into like maturity now. And I think the defense is stacked on talent. I think the defense is absolutely stacked on talent. Uh, so I really don't think it comes down to any one single player. And then uh, last question here, Odin. Over under on the cost of the nosebleed tickets against Teton this year. And over under is at 500. We're talking like last row in C? I bet you can get that under 500. Simply because it's so fucking cold up there. It'll be so cold up there. We're talking like last row in C, you'll get in under 500. Off of a loss? Absolutely under 500. Oh, you mean like off of a loss because... Uh, um, Yeah, I think so. I, I think so, because like it's... I think so. I feel like you can get... Again, and this is if. If that ticket comes on the market and is being sold on StubHub... That's like the last row in C. I bet it's under five hundred dollars. We're talking about a terrible ticket. And by the way, forget the nosebleed. Have what? Can I interest you in this obstructed view B seat? This 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 seat in section B, where you can only see half of the field. I had C tickets. It was two versus three. And mine were like six fifty a piece. Yeah, I also don't think Michigan's going to be that great this year. Um, that that's the other thing. If this was another two versus three situation, sure, but I don't think Michigan's going to be that good this year. That's another thing. All right, all right uh, that is all the. I yeah, think there were a couple the dropped in the chat. Maybe. Um, uh, let me. So, quick search uh, here. Uh, ask Sloopcast. This is from Buckeye Zach. So, will this new defense finally get Day home? I assume home means national title. Um, to which I will say that Bama's very good. I think Bama's returning a lot, and that will always be difficult. Um, I think if the D is playing as well as I'm now expecting them to play, they'll make the playoffs. I think this team is absolutely good enough to for sure make the playoffs. That that almost feels like a given to me if the defense improves as much as I'm expecting them to. Hmm. National title, like it's, it's hard because it's just like it can come down to one or two plays. It can come down to a player getting hurt. It's, and like I said, Bama is returning a ton this year. They're going to be very, very good. Um, I, you hope so. Um, and, and I'm also just worried about, I'm still worried about the offensive line. I hmm. think the offensive line is going to be good this year, but there's a lot of change up front. So I'm also worried yeah. about the offensive well, line. I did see, I did see, and even though we're in, well, right now, still. Did you have to check your watch to know you're in April? Yes. Uh, <laughs> no. Um, oh, for visual effect. Um, the, the early, early, early um, betting odds for Ohio State in their opening game, they are a 10 and a half point favorite. Over a, a a good Notre Dame team. Um, can can you find national title odds for us real quick, Kyle? Sure, I'll I'll look if you wanna if you wanna look at 
um odin's last question real quick uh odin asks why is bryce young the most overrated quarterback ever um i don't know it's and like ohio state will benefit from this i think this year because i'm i'm saying i've said it last week i'll say it again now shroud's gonna win the heisman this year it's happening Stroud's going to win the Heisman. The, the Heisman has basically been reduced to who's the quarterback on the best team. And every once in a while, it won't be the quarterback. It might be a running back. Hey, it might even be a receiver. Um, but that the, that's what the Heisman has reduced itself towards. So I don't think they'll give it to Bryce Young because I don't think they're going to give it to someone twice. And right now, the best quarterback on the best team, to me, seems far and away to be C.J. Stroud. All right. Again, um, if we, especially if we take if we take Young out of the equation. And by the way, I think Stroud's better than Young. I'll, let me just say that for the record in case anyone's confusing what I'm saying. Stroud's better than Young. But yeah, that's that's this is what the Heisman has reduced itself to. Hmm. All right, um, I'm going to, I found two odds, but I'm going to go with this one because it's more relevant than the other one, which was in January. Uh, so this one from SI, they have Alabama as a two to one. Okay. Georgia is a 13 to four. Okay. And Ohio State a six to one. Then it, and then it starts dropping off Clemson 12 to one. USC 25 to 1, Texas A&M 25 to 1, which hell no after what I saw in the spring game. Uh, <laughs> uh, Oklahoma 25 to 1, Michigan 30 to 1, and Notre Dame and Florida 40 to 1. If Notre Dame is a 40 to 1 and Ohio State's favored by 10 and a half points? Yes. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. How is USC even in the convo? Uh, because everyone's hyped about the coaching change, and they they have they picked up a bunch of well, great they, they players. They got Caleb Williams. They got Caleb Williams too. They got and Gangland says the Pac-12 is easy. That is also a huge piece of it. Now well, that's not going to help them once the playoffs come. Uh, but they're, they're going to run to the same issue Notre Dame has done over and over and over. Yeah, uh, yeah, they're just they're gonna they're gonna hit the playoffs, but not have played anyone all year, and then hit a brick wall once they have to play Ohio State, Bama, Georgia, in the in the playoffs. Mm. Say it's it's just what yep. we see from USC, what we've seen from a lot of teams over the years. They and, and quite frankly, Ohio State in in an occasion where their conference just kind of sucked. And because of that, they were completely unprepared for the playoffs. It's a thing that happens. Mm -hmm. All right, Jared, that's it. That's all the questions we have for today's episode. Let's go ahead and kick us off. We'll, we'll come back here again um, next week. We'll have, um, we'll be talking about the spring game, and how how much we're going to overhype it and overanalyze it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, should be fun. All right. Um, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? I don't feel like doing any plugging. I feel like ending the episode. Honestly, I, I didn't Did, really. Didn't you have a piece of basketball news? I oh yeah I did yeah Aha, thank you I, got, I did I, I got your back thank you yes Justin Suing returned to Ohio State as long as long as he can stay healthy here I think um is a it's a big at it's a big welcome back for the basketball team as they they're I know I know they have a they have a good class coming in but they they need some help they'll need some help coming in and just assuming coming back is is a big welcome. Uh that and the the right state transfer, I think will be a huge addition. So and you know, again, like we're just assuming that Branham's gone, right? So 
the, the right state yeah. transfer is huge. Um, and then if suing can actually stay healthy and contribute this year, that will be huge. Um, and it, like just just the young guys maturing, a lot of good guys will be coming in in this recruiting class, and a lot of very talented freshmen will be hopefully taking big steps and becoming very talented sophomores. So it's what you just kind of got to hope for at this point, and you also kind of hope that the that the, the big center who's a freshman this year, whose name I can't remember, um, is ready to go as a freshman. Cause I really feel like Ohio state sometimes is just that close. <laughs> like if they just had a really big talented center. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. That's it. That is it. Tonight's ending music. We brought to you by uh Columbus based, uh, call them a, f- a, a folk punk band, I guess. Um, two cow garage, the name of the band. Nope, not emo. Uh, folk punk. Uh, once again, Two Cal Garage, uh, Columbus based band. And I, I, I already said, I already said it, Austin. Sorry. No, folk punk. No, I haven't. Oh, you want to just pick the song? I'm sorry. I, yeah, absolutely. Pick the song. I didn't know you liked Two Cal Garage. Yeah, pick the song. What? Swing set assassin. Awesome. Uh it's it's spell uh Zach, it's spelled out. It's T W O. That might you might need that for Googling purposes. T W O. Yeah. Uh so yeah, uh Austin wants me to to play the song Swing Set Assassin, so we will play that. And with all of that being said. I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, uh, this is Two Cal Garage playing Swing Set Assassin. <laughs>